Okay, year 12's number 9 in a 14 plus series on redox. Let's get going. All right, we're going to be learning about observations for redox reactions or actually just going over stuff that you should already know. Okay, so determine the observations from redox reactions using the data sheet. Okay, so redox reactions can cause macroscopic, which is like, you know, color changes and stuff, which can be observed and measured with, as with all observations, you should follow, if you're asked to write an observation, you should follow the standard setup, which is describe the appearance of all, all, all reactants using the information on the data sheet and then describe the react appearance of all products as well. All right. Using the information on the data sheet. Okay. So, um, some new considerations with redox. So, halogen waters okay so what they are is that they are halogens dissolved in water and you use the chlorine water um iodine water and bromine water are the ones that are on page five and they're under colors of halogens in aqueous solutions so sometimes you'll get told okay i add some chlorine water to something and then you use the colors of halogens in aqueous solutions to work out what color that stuff is all right um Halogen gases, chlorine and fluorine gases, again, page five under colors of free elements. And then the halide ions are all colorless. Okay, so um, just be aware that that chlorine water is not the same color as chlorine gas, nor is uh, iodine water the same color as iodine. And you will also see another table for organic reactions, uh, sorry, or halogens in organic solvents. Um, we're going to deal with more of that in uh, later on when we go to organics. But generally, uh, halogens can dissolve in various organic um, substances and be different colors as well. All right. So some new considerations with redox. OK, so certain self-indicating oxidants uh, like chromate and dichromate and permanganate are listed under colored anions. Um, so, you know, uh, and then the most metals are gray solids, uh, not silver solids. Let's not call them silver. But like if you read it, it says it's silver. It doesn't mean it's silver. It just means it's gray colored. And the noticeable exceptions are copper, which is salmon pink, and gold, which is yellow. And remember, displacement reactions will have substances coat the other metal. Um, all right. Uh, some new considerations with redox. The intensity of whatever color of a solution can increase or decrease in various reactions uh, due to the increase or decrease in the concentration of ions in solutions. Okay. Um, when you see physical redox reactions in the lab, sometimes you'll notice that the colors don't necessarily match, um, especially when they're coating something else. Um, but just be aware that you just write down whatever it says on the data sheet. Okay. Also, the mass or size of electrodes can increase or decrease depending on the reaction that is occurring. Okay. So the mass or size of electrodes. Also, with this one, the intensity of the color. All right. Just have a think about when something is in excess or not in excess, or if the other substance is, is in excess. If you've got a colored ion, and then you react it with something that else that is in, in excess, you might use up all of the colored ions, which means that it will go colorless, okay? Um, if you've got your colored ions in excess, you will only use some of those colored ions, and therefore the intensity of that color will decrease, okay? Also take into account when you dilute something or when you uh, evaporate some water off, the color can get uh, more pale or less intense or more intense depending on what you do. Okay, graphite electrodes, they are gray. Um, gases are bubbled through solutions. So you just say that, you know, a um, whatever colored gas is bubbled through a whatever color solution. All right, and oxygen and hydrogen and carbon dioxide gases are colorless and odorless. So all of those things are just considerations to do with redoxes. Let's go a look at some questions, okay? So let's have a think about what you would actually observe with this one here. You might have seen this question before in some of the previous videos. OK, so let's have a think. We've got iron three here plus and you've got iron two plus and iron there. OK, so the left hand cell, if you don't have your data sheet or you don't remember from the other videos, is going from Fe two plus to Fe, sorry, Fe three plus to Fe two plus. And that, which is a reduction, so this is the oxidation reaction, okay? Those are the two reactions that are occurring in this half cell here. All right, so what will you see? So let's have a look. We've got iron 2 and iron 3. Iron 2 is pale green. Iron 3 is pale brown. So what's happening here is that this one here on the left is, becoming, is going from uh, less pale brown 
uh, pale brown and more pale green which means it might just be an ugly color but you get the idea it becomes less pale brown more pale green and there's a uh, black colored um, solid in the in it as the graphite okay um, the other side this the uh, electrode is getting smaller because it's um, going into solution and it's getting more pale green okay so it's getting more pale green the solution okay and ideally you might want to describe it before uh, as well okay so let's say we have a um, we have a beaker full of sodium no, no right inside it, sodium bromide okay and we're going to pipe some chlorine gas into it okay so what color is the sodium bromide okay so the sodium is colorless the bromide is colorless so we have a colorless solution has a now what color is the chlorine gas going into it okay so color of free element okay because it's chlorine gas has a um, has a greenish yellow gas bubble through okay um, then what happens after that okay so we should have a displacement reaction yes because that's there that's there that's the downhill arrangement okay so you're going to form bromine and you're going to form chloride okay so but bromine is not going to be a liquid it's going to be dissolved in the water that is already present so it's going to end up as br2 aqueous so you're going to have an orange uh well the solution turns orange solution turns orange right and in theory the gas is decolorized but don't you don't need to really worry about that much either all right so the gases actually kind of go away as well all right solution turns orange okay um let's try one with iodine water not a gas going through it okay so let's try iodine water iodine water added to solution of potassium chloride so here's my beaker here's my uh well okay here's my potassium chloride okay here's my iodine water in another thing in another beaker and i'm adding that one to that one okay so let's have a look will this reaction occur here is your iodine again this is a limitation of the standard reduction potential table because this is supposed to be a solid but in general you can just treat it as if it will predict it and there's the chlorine is it in the downhill orientation no it is not so it's in the uphill orientation so this reaction is actually not going to occur but this you can still write the observations that will occur here all right so a brown solution which one's the brown solution it's the i2 okay so it's here color of halogen in aqueous solution because it's iodine water right brown solution added to colorless solution uh, which will just make a less brown solution is made okay so effectively it's just becomes a, a mixture of the two things and they don't react okay Let's go look at a piece of cadmium is placed in a copper sulfate solution. So solution of copper sulfate, and then you dump in a piece of cadmium in there. Okay, so uh, let's check if that will react. Here's your copper two plus aqueous. Here's your cadmium. So yes, that's in the downhill or orientation. So that will react. Okay, so therefore we have a uh, gray, oops, gray solid added to a what color is this copper sulfate a blue solution 
because of the copper. Okay. Now I didn't say which one is in excess, so let's just say that this one is in excess. All right, the copper sulfate is in excess. Um, so that's added to the blue solution. It's in excess. So what happens to the cadmium? The cadmium will dissolve. And what color is cadmium? Cadmium is colorless. So uh, metal uh, dissolves, turns into ions. All right. Oh, yep, no. So, yep, the metal, uh, the metal doesn't dissolve. What am I talking about? The metal gray solid coated with salmon pink solid. Okay, so the gray solid is coated with the salmon pink solid. What's the salmon pink solid? It's the copper that's appearing on it. And the solution <coughs> becomes <coughs> a less intense blue.